Hi, I'm Al Dayer, coming to you from Mickey's Bait and Tackle, North Syracuse, New York. And today we're going to tie a streamer. And this is a variation of the Slaymaker series of streamers that represent small fingerling trout. They were, uh, back in the 1950s, originated uh, out of Pennsylvania. There was the little brook trout, the little brown trout, and the little rainbow trout. Well, this happens to be the brook trout variation and I call it Al's Brookie. And the neat thing is that when Slaymaker tied his flies, he didn't have all the synthetics available to him that fly tires today have available. And I'm talking mostly mylar, plastics, okay? You saw the movie The Graduate. Remember when uh, Ben was advised to take a career in plastics? Well, this is, a, this is the result of that, maybe not directly from that film, but we have today a plethora not only colorful mylars available to us to tie our streamers and other types of uh, attractor patterns. So we're going to incorporate that into this brook trout pattern. And it's a pretty little pattern, very simple, not a lot of materials involved in this. And here we go. First I'm going to take this example out of the vise, okay, and I'm going to put my hook. And when I tie streamers, you know, I like about a 4x to 6x long. The classic uh, limerick bend is really nice. The classic sprout bend is very nice. Model perfect, whatever you, whatever you have available to you. This happens to be about a 5X limerick. All right, let's place our hook in the vise, like so. All right, and I'm using about a six aught black thread uh, in this case. I'll bring my thread to bear onto the shank of that hook. Wrap the entire shank almost right up until probably the point and then wrap back towards just behind the eye get rid of that tag all right very good and the first material that i'm going to put on is a braid it's a mylar braid and it's going to be this blue mylar braid okay and it has a pearlescence to it and you know when you look at a brook trout you see those little blue dots the brook trout is an amazing fish. It, it has the, the spectrum of the rainbow represented in its coloration. There's just about everything there. There's red, there's blues, there's olives, there's blacks, there's golds, you name it. It's like a billboard for the rainbow, sort of. Anyways, we'll bring that braid forward, wrapping our body. Blue is an interesting color. It stands out underwater and retains its color. A lot of colors fade underwater. People think that red stands out, but actually red's the first color to disappear, whereas blue really retains its coloration. Um, you see a lot of trout lures made with blue, blue and silver, blue and green, are very favorite colors in combination with silver and gold for trout. Now there's our body. Okay, the next material that we're going to put on is the underbody. In this case, I'm using a calf tail, an orange calf tail. You see a lot of orange in brook trout. We're going to size that up. Remember, your streamer shouldn't be tied too full. You want to kind of tie them on the sparse side. Get rid of, okay, get rid of some of that fluffy stuff. Measure that right about there. Okay, that's going underneath. I'm going to cut that nice and flush. Okay. Measure again. Perfect. Get that under there. Established. Just right. A few wraps. Very good. There's our underbody of the orange. And we're going to do a throat. And characteristically, we use saddle hackle when we tie our throats or our beards. In this case, we're going to use what is known as a turkey flat. It's actually the body feather of a domestically raised turkey. Nothing goes to waste after Thanksgiving. And I'm going to take that and cut a strip of that, nice and even if I can close to the stem. Okay. There's our, there's our throat. And I'm going to measure that before I cut it in. Okay. I like this. It's nice and straight. And it looks like the underbody of the brookie. There we go. Beautiful. You'll see the results of this in a minute. It has a sort of a natural curvature to it. You want to kind of let that natural curvature conform to the underbody of the uh, the trout fry that we're here representing. Beautiful. Okay. Always leave enough room for the head of your flies too. 
especially when tying streamers with complicated wings, even though this is not a complicated wing pattern. Now the next thing that goes over the blue body is, a, again, a calf tail. This time we're using a nice dark green calf tail. I like a dark green to represent the brook trout. And this is about a size 6 hook, so it's a rather large size. I tie these in usually 8s and 10s. Okay, the one you saw represented in the vise was about a size 8. But for instructional purposes, I wanted to go big. Go big or go home, right? And we're going to put that on there. I'm going to measure that up, get rid of some of that fluffy stuff at the base. Okay, measure that up again. And I'm going to cut that nice and flush. It's a colorful pattern. All right, let's see. Okay, somebody's allergic to hair. Huh? All right, let's get that established. Nice and neat. You always want to make sure your wing sets properly on top. There we go. Now here comes the, the topping. goes on top of that. And this I'm very picky about. It's a flash of boo. It's a speckled gold. I love this for this pattern. It's the number... Uh, I believe it's a 6933 is the number on that. 6933. Okay, speckled gold flashaboo. And when dealing with flashaboo, this stuff can be extremely unruly, especially if you take it out of its plastic sleeve. And I saw a tire do this years ago, and it really inspired me. What I do is I cut a little slit right about there in the plastic. Okay, and what it allows me to do, it allows me to take just the, amount of, uh, just the proper amount of flashaboo that I'm going to need for a particular pattern. I just put my point of my scissors in there and just pull it out. There you are, right there. Okay? And the rest stays intact, uniform. It doesn't go all over the place. So that's a little trick I'd like to pass along to you folks. I don't know who started that, but boy, I'd like to thank that person. There's our topping. All right, we're going to measure that. I like to double it over. So I tie it in about in the middle somewhere. And this looks just like the top of that brookie, where it's like variegated and speckled and gold. And I'll bend that over the top like that. A little longer. We'll pull that out just a little bit longer. How's that? We'll bend that over. There we go. And we'll get that established. We'll trim any of the excess that we don't need. Here, get rid of some of that. Yeah, I like this stuff for the topping of that fly. There. Now, we'll just form the head. So, and there's one little last step, too, I want to emphasize on this pattern. Okay. We'll finish that. Okay. Uh, the final thing you really want to do is put eyes on this. And when you saw the model in the beginning, it had the eyes that I like. Okay, and in this case, what we're going to do is some testers model paint in gold and in black. What I'll do is I'll take a nail head, just dip it in the gold at first, and then just rubber stamp it onto one side and then on the other, let that dry, and come back and do the black pupil just on top of that gold. So what you end up with is a gold eye, and when you look at the brook trout, the eyes are gold, and it complements the, the topping as well. So, yeah, it's a beautiful little streamer, Ailes Brookie. You know, the brook trout are such a gorgeous species of fish. We used to be uh, endowed most of our streams and rivers in upstate New York were just full of brookies. And then, of course, they brought the brown trout along the turn of the century, last century, and that kind of pushed the brookies out of the way. But the DEC in the Adirondack region, now that the acid rain problem is sort of uh, backing off a little bit, has had tremendous results and uh, restoring heritage strain brook trout to the, some of the ponds and lakes in the upper Adirondack region. So those are beautiful fish, and they're very cannibalistic, by the way, like any trout. So they will eat their young, unfortunately. But uh, because we have the synthetics available to us, we can tie a variety of these fish, uh, uh, fingerlings, I should say. And uh, in future videos, I'm going to show you what the rainbow looks like and also the brown trout in a couple of different phases looks like. So, yeah, tie a few of these up, throw them out in the spring, year-round, what have you, and uh, just good luck with them. All right, now hey, uh, enjoy yourself. Look, winter's around the corner. Is it spring around the corner? I forgot. How does that go? We're in winter now, so spring's around the corner. And uh, 
Good luck to all of you fishing, and this is Al from Mickey's Bait and Tackle saying so long.